The rivalry between the United States and Russia is not a new phenomenon. Both nations have been at opposite ends for years. This dates back as far as the early 20th century when Russia still identified as the Soviet Union. A silent war, better known as the Cold War, intensified in 1978 when commercial flights between the United States and the Soviet Union were halted. Fortunately, in April of 1986, these flights were resumed. But it didn't end there. Presidents like George W. Bush and Barack Obama came to office with high hopes for becoming friendly with the Russian Federation. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. President Donald Trump also made the same promise when he stepped into office, but with several reports about Vladimir Putin, the Russian president, meddling with the U.S. elections, it becomes impossible to see the hypocrisy in the promise of President Trump. The U.S.-Russian rivalry has particularly been focused on military strength in the last few years, with both countries going the extra mile to outdo the other. In 2018, Russia reportedly owned over 7,300 nuclear warheads, while the United States States owned around 6,970 warheads. Most importantly, due to the importance of helicopters in military combat, both countries have put extra effort into creating the most sophisticated helicopters the world has ever seen. This has caused a very important question to arise. Are the Russians making more advanced helicopters than the United States? Well, let's find out. First and foremost, the United States still relies on its AH-64 Apache as an attack helicopter. The Russians, on the other hand, have advanced incredibly. This is evident in the fact that they have created several attack helicopters ranging from the Heinz to the Black Sharks and the Alligators. Interestingly, all of these are flying in concert with one another. Perhaps the most impressive of the helicopter pack is the Mi-28 Havoc, an attack helicopter that sports a 30mm cannon in the nose. It also features a series of gun pods, rockets, an armored body, and an anti-air missiles feature. When the helicopter operates, the pilot is kept safe in the back seat while the weapons officer sits in the front seat. This is very similar to the sitting arrangement of the AH-64 Apache mentioned earlier. However, due to the sensor limitations of the helicopter, it could only be used during the day. This meant that if a military emergency occurred in the middle of the night, the helicopter would be practically useless. The Russians analyzed this flaw and fixed it in the Mi-28N, an updated version of the Mi-28. With the 28N, pilots and weapons officers can use the helicopter in areas with low light including at night. So how is this fixed? The engineers fixed the problem by installing a ray dome right above the rotor. Another impressive helicopter in the Russian fleet is the Ka-52 Alligator, a successor to the Ka-50 Black Shark. Aside from having two seats, unlike the Black Shark, the Alligator contains six weapons hardpoints, which causes it to be able to carry anti-tank missiles and anti-ship missiles. Just like it sounds, the anti-ship missiles are capable of destroying tanker ships completely. Furthermore, the Alligator has another really impressive quality, coaxial rotors. This means that there are two sets of blades above the helicopter, which spin in opposite directions. With this, the helicopter is given more stability than a traditional helicopter, and it makes the anti-torque tail rotor unneeded. To understand how advanced the alligator is, let's put it up against the AH-64 Apache of the United States. Today, both helicopters are regarded as two of the world's deadliest war machines and will probably do more than enough damage if they were ever to be used in a real fight. Let's take a look at the specifications of both helicopters. The AH-64 Apache is an attack helicopter with twin engines. Developed in 1984 and with a series of upgrades since then, it cost over $39 million dollars and can carry two crew members at the same time. The United States currently has over 2,000 of these attack helicopters. They weigh around 11,387 pounds and they have four major hardpoints, plus a station on each wingtip, which is necessary for twin missile packs. It also has a chain gun of 30 millimeters, which in turn has 12,000 rounds. The Ka-52 by the Russians was rolled out in 1997 and it cost around $18 million to make one alligator. It weighs around 16,967 pounds and has six hard points. However, the Russians have only 100 of these bad boys in service today. Also, it uses only 400 rounds of ammunition 
unlike the Apache which uses over 1200. Taking a look at performance, the Apache comes with two turbo shaft engines, both of which generate a combined horsepower of 3780. Interestingly, the American Apache runs on electric engines, and the United Kingdom's version runs on engines made by Rolls-Royce. The Apache can also go as fast as 182 miles per hour. With a cruise speed of 165 miles per hour, the helicopter can endure for up to three hours in the air. The Alligator, however, comes with a stronger performance. It has a combined horsepower of 4,800 plus a speed of 192 miles per hour. Its cruise speed also sits at 170 miles per hour, and it has a greater ferry range than the Apache. The KA-52 Alligator is also the world's first operational helicopter that comes with a rescue ejection system. With this, if the helicopter suffers a really bad hit and is doomed for destruction, the pilots can escape at all altitudes and speeds. This simply means that the Alligator is more superior to its American counterparts in terms of survivability, and this is because of its armored pilot seat coupled with the ejection system and its ruggedness in all combat situations. The Russians hit a home run in the radar and avionics sector. The American Apache has an electronic warfare suite, integrated radio frequency countermeasures, night vision cameras, target tracker, and an auto-bore sight, all of which are part of the new Arrowhead design. By contrast, the Russian Ka-52 comes with radar mounted on the nose of the helicopter, double antennas that pick up the ground and aerial targets. It also has infrared and electronic jammers for countermeasures, plus a radar warning receiver. It also has a laser detection system coupled with a missile approach warning sensor. Finally, it has an electronic radio plus a sight piloting navigation system. This makes the Ka-52 dangerous in any weather conditions, night or day. It also appears like the United States conceded defeat years back when they turned down U.S. companies to buy the Mi-17 rotorcraft from Moscow. Interestingly, the United States didn't just buy one helicopter to help outfit the Afghanistan security forces, but dozens of them. To make matters even worse, top officials of the Pentagon tried repeatedly to assure members of Congress that they had made the right choice. They then cited a top-secret study that was conducted in 2010. The study claimed that the Mi-17 by the Russians was a far superior choice to many American helicopters. Senator John Cornyn mentioned then, so why are we buying Russian helicopters when there are American manufacturers that can meet the very same requirements? Makes no sense whatsoever, and the Department of Defense has steadfastly refused to cooperate with reasonable inquiries into why in the world they continue to persist along this pathway. While this might have been soiled with potential for fraud and political accusations, it doesn't change the fact that the United States considered a Russian helicopter to be superior. The Russians are also quite confident that their helicopters are better. Konstantin Sikov is a corresponding member of the Russian Academy of Missile and Artillery Sciences, and he strongly believes that the Mi-17 is better than the U.S. UH-60 Blackhawk, which has been touted as a strong competitor in the last few years. He said that even though the Mi-17 practically operates almost the same radio-electronic equipment and weapon systems as the Blackhawk, it is still better than the U.S. model by up to 40 percent when you take various parameters into account. He added that the range actions of the Blackhawk are significantly shorter than that of the Mi-17, plus the range of flight of the Hawk sits at 495 kilometers, while its Russian counterpart operates at 950 kilometers. Also, the U.S. helicopter can take just 11 troopers, while the Russian Mi-17 can take up to 26. Most importantly, the Russian helicopter has up to 2,000 horsepower against an American horsepower of 1,400. In conclusion, the Russian helicopters appear to be on par with their American counterpart at the moment, but we can only hope that the coming years will be different perhaps this time with the United States of America in the first place.